So is the housing market in recovery? If it's in recovery, did it crash? If it crashed, where was I? They've been saying it's going to crash, and I kept saying it. I didn't see it, and it doesn't look to me like it ever happened. I'm so confused. Let's try to figure all this out. I'm Bill Gross. I'm a Los Angeles area real estate broker. I watch the national market as well. And I update the market every week on market trends, focusing on the data, not on some hyperbole. And my real purpose is to educate you to make the best decisions possible. It's amazing to me how bad the information we get is. That's my premise. We're going to talk about that to go that into detail. But always let's start with where the market is looking at the two most important data points. Most important data point number one is always mortgage rates. Mortgage rates drive the market because the value of any asset is in inverse relationship to the return they could get elsewhere, i.e. the mortgage rates. And as you can see, mortgage rates, which peaked back in October at 7.3, today are up over percent below at 6.2%. Now, they are a little higher. They were down as low as 6.04%, so we're up a little bit. Not sure if that's a trend or that's just the economy strengthening. Not sure what all that means, but still well below and low enough to cause tremendous buyer interest in properties, and we'll go through that in detail. That's the most important factor, though, of everything in our marketplace. The second most important factor is inventory. You cannot have a housing crash without a lot of inventory and sellers anxious to take any price at all for the property. We don't have that. Take a look at inventory today. We are still at historic lows. This is the number currently, almost exact same as two years ago. It's certainly more inventory by a quarter than it was a year ago. But again, this was the peak of the pandemic uh, period in terms of our economy economically. And you can see that, that the current level is well below all non-COVID periods ever, <clears throat> dramatically below. So by any measure, we have very tight inventory. We have buyers who come in the market and sellers uh, can probably command the prices that they want on the properties that they have. An interesting factor, though, also is the amount of off-market activity. You can see that by any measure there, it's the highest in history. What does that mean? It means that the normal market is kind of locked up. And so savvy uh, agents like me will work off market deals, sellers who might accept an offer, buyers who might pay a little bit more, put it together and get it sold. So it tells you that there's friction in the market. And so this is off market is an additional piece of business going on. But it certainly does not indicate a housing crash. The opposite shows there are more buyers interested than the MLS and Zillow and Redfin can possibly provide for. And so they're going uh, resolving themselves with off-market activity. These are national numbers. Let's take a look at the local numbers. I'm in Los Angeles. Outsource Research is my favorite source for information. And they still rate their market overall as a seller's market. Kind of barely, the middle being 30, we're at 39. It's been a little uh, lower, so it's moved in that direction. Overall, we can see median prices increasing, median list prices increasing, uh, inventory is basically uh, leveled or coming back up. And look at the rents. As long as rents go up, people choose between paying higher rent or buying a house. That's going to continue to drive people's interest in buying houses in the market. They also have, I think, one of the best indicators of value which is the price per square foot. And they break it down to four market segments, the lowest price homes, two median grades, and a high level based on square footage and the number of bedrooms captured down here. What's fascinating, and I love this statistic, is what is the price for a square foot of a house? Uh, apples to apples, you know, what were eggs a year ago versus now? What is a square foot of home uh, a, a valued a year ago versus now in these market segments? And you can see across segments, the low price of square foot was going for $420, and today is going for $539, up about 25, uh, maybe 30%. The high-end homes were going for $1,005 a square foot on average, and now going for $1,143, up over 10%, uh, about 12, 11%. So you can see that over, and you can see how steady it is for the most part, maybe peaking back in May, June, July, but overall, the numbers are significantly higher than they were uh, uh, two, three years ago and two years ago and a year ago. So we're seeing a steady improvement in the overall market in Los Angeles. So where are we at now today? Hard to say. With all the news about housing crashes, it looks like that's not the story anymore. In fact, Redfin declared the opposite. They said the housing market has started to recover. Not sure really what that means. Maybe the correction stopped. 
maybe the slowdown has slowed down, but they're publishing that the housing market has started to recover. And they go into detail and explain the reason why they say that, which is with the drop in interest rates, more buyers come in the market. But look how, how slow the mortgage rates drop compared to how quickly buyers jump back in the market. And it just tells you there's pent up demand. There's buyers who want to buy. There's more buyers who want to buy than there are sellers who are ready to sell. That means there's more demand in the market to push things up. And so they're saying this is a tide shift. I think they're right, that the buyers are still pushing the market higher. Now, Zillow uh, is kind of the opposite. Uh, they take the opposite approach. They say home prices kept dropping in December, which is true, before mortgage rate relief appeared. Now, it's interesting. They're kind of reporting on last month's news in the beginning of the headline and then the real news. That's kind of Zillow's way. Zillow wants very emotional buyers and sellers because they need you to click. They're not selling houses. Redfin is representing buyers and trying to represent sellers. Zillow's purely advertising play. So they just want you to go, what, and click on it. Uh, and then they're going to sell your information to real estate agents and other sources to get money. They're just an advertising company. So they're always going to have more emotional headlines because they need to drive click traffic on their websites. They're not educating customers. And as a result, their headlines tend to be uh, more misleading or less obvious. So you can see their housing report talks about December prices dropping uh, rather than focusing on the reality, which is uh, mortgage rate relief has arrived. That would be probably the, the headline that they, an editor would normally put on a news article. So what's all this mean? Well, <clears throat> the smartest group are people who are professional investors of, and buyers of property. They seem to think it's still a good time to buy. Now they've cooled off a bit because the competition for home buying was so intense over the last year or two, but still the home investor section at 75% is still historic highs for non-COVID periods. You can see this is a trend that's been going on for the last 20 years. And so investors see the value of long-term uh, investing in real estate more and more and more. Do buyers as well. I would say buyers are being confused by the same source of information. NerdWallet, for example, is an online resource for people in credit. I would say, again, like Zillow, very into misleading customers, creating panic, and uh, as a result, their customers are confused. Let's take a look at what their what their findings are. They're saying, I find this fascinating. They're saying 11% of Americans plan to buy a house next 12 months. Okay, that sounds reasonable. I think about 9% do every year, so that seems right. But then they go on to say that, this was fascinating to me, they buried the lead. Most expected housing crash, two thirds of Americans say housing market crash is imminent in the next three years. So these dupes are gonna buy a house and these smart people, the vast majority, know there's gonna be a crash, or is it the way around? The smart people know in the long run housing is a good buy and not pay attention to the news in the short run. And to me, this is really showing, this is an indictment of NerdWallet and similar websites. They do a terrible job of educating consumers. Most consumers know nothing when I start the process with them about saving for money, building credit, um, uh, budgeting, and the importance of living within your means. And this NerdWallet article, to my mind, shows that quite clearly, that they are just not at all interested in helping customers, I think, develop the right skills to manage their own finances and then to be productive consumers in our marketplace. But that's not the worst of the week. The worst news of the week, in my opinion, my award goes to CNBC. CNBC had a, has a video, why the U.S. is so, uh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, why U.S. real estate is so flawed. And it's just, uh, how long is this? It's like a, I think, 20, 30 minute video. Uh, and it basically interviews all these special interests on if we only did my program, my special group program, that would solve the housing market. If we only had more government regulation on this and more programs on that. They really miss the two central themes, which are one, um, we just need to build more houses. We have less houses added per year than people looking to buy. That will always cause people not able to buy houses by definition. In a normal market, when people want more cars, car manufacturers build more cars. When, toy, when a toy's hot, Barbie's hot, Mattel builds more Barbies. But in real estate, even though home builders would build more houses, many governments and many politicians won't allow us to build more houses. As a result, our housing stock is well below what's needed. 
And that's the underlying factor that keeps people frustrated. <clears throat> that's what makes it so expensive, why it's such a good deal for investors, and why investors are buying and perhaps home buyers can't. The second major factor they kind of ignore is rather than a hodgepodge of programs, we just need to improve the economy. What can we do to help more Americans make more money, save more money, educate them to understand their situation better? That's education, that's a better economy. It's not about hiring all these very expensive Washington and New York consultants with their special programs. They're gonna get rich on it, but inevitably more money spent on housing and government programs makes more bureaucrats rich and less citizens able to buy houses. And that's not what we need. So my raspberry for the week goes to CNBC, not worth watching. And I think in general, CNBC is very progressive. They think the government needs to be the solution for everything. There's no industry more regulated than, uh, than real estate. The housing building is regulated. The sale of, the, of that property is very highly regulated. All the programs are highly regulated and run by the government, FHA, VA, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, quasi-government agencies. So if there's a failure, it's the failure of the government agencies from federal, state, local, county, special interest groups. And nobody's ever held accountable for those failures. And CNBC is saying, oh, no, all of us in the process, just support us more and we'll solve the problem. I don't think anybody at this point believes this. So what to do? At the end of the day, I'm not saying go out and buy a house if you can't afford it. But if you can afford a house, if it makes sense for you financially, buying a house is a great long-term investment to build wealth uh, and to uh, avoid taxes and build wealth. And as an investor, if there's an investment that makes sense, um, then by all means, uh, I, I'm a real estate investor, it's a great opportunity to build wealth and passive income in the long run, if it makes sense for you. But if you can't afford the investment, you can't afford the house, don't buy it. The numbers have to make sense for you. And you have to understand what you're getting into. So if I can help you in any way, Call, text, or email me. My contact information is below. I'm on social media, at Bill Gross EXP. And as always, if I can help you, either way, make today your best day ever. Thanks so much.